my name is Rebecca Wolf, and I work for Resist. For anyone who doesn't know, um, Resist is a research consortium led from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine with partners in South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, India, Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, Resist stands for Resilient and Responsive Health Systems and we focus on three key health systems topics, which are financing, health workforce and governance. So our webinar today comes from the governance team and it's on the topic of accountability in the implementation of Nigeria's National Health Act and more specifically the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, which was set up by the Act to increase revenue for primary health services. So we'll start with a presentation from Professor ben Benjamin Ozuchukwu, who is a researcher based at the Health Policy Research Group at the University of Nigeria. And Benjamin is going to introduce a framework that the RESIST team at Health Policy Research Group have developed for strengthening accountability in the implementation of the fund. And then after that, uh, the Right Honourable Dr Daniel Okburabor from the Anugu State Health House of Assembly will outline his progress in implementing the fund and the potential role of an accountability framework. And I'm now going to hand over to Benjamin to begin his presentation, and then he's going to hand over to Daniel when he's finished. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I, uh, greetings from Nigeria. I'm going to be presenting an accountability framework for the implementation of the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, which we developed in Nigeria. I'm going to give you a background to the National Health Act, the overview of the fund, then our research aim and methodology, then the findings which we used to develop the accountability framework and recommendations to government and non-governmental organizations, then challenges to accountability and implementation, and then influencing policy and the implementation process. Uh, to start with, the National Health Act's development spanned over a period of 10 years. In 2004, a bill was sent to the National Assembly on the National Health Act. Two years after, there was a public hearing and approval by the National Economic Council. The next year, in 2007, it was passed by the House of Representatives but the Senate did not pass this, and so there was no harmonization. In 2008, this act was resurrected and reviewed by the National Assembly, and thereafter passed by the Senate and House of Representatives in 2009. Two years after, the two versions, the one from the Senate and the House of Representatives was harmonized. However, the president could not give assent to this version. And so it went back to the National Assembly. And in 2013, the Senate organized a public hearing for this. It had to go back because there were a lot of issues that needed to be resolved. However, in November 2014, the president, the then president of the country, President Goodluck Jonathan, gave assent to this bill. Now, the key features of the bill, it guarantees every citizen the right to a minimum package of health services. There is mandatory provision of emergency services, and there is framework for identifying people who are eligible for free basic services, that is pregnant women, children under five, and senior citizens. But most importantly, it established the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund. Now, this Basic Healthcare Provision Fund to come from 1% consolidated fund of Nigeria. That means the amount to be set aside before sharing the remaining one to other uh, programs and ministries and departments. So the 1% is consolidated. Now this 1%, out of this 1%, half of it is expected to go to the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and half to the National Health Insurance Scheme. 
Now, the half that goes to the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, 50% of that is supposed to be used for provision of basic minimum package of services to all citizens in primary healthcare facilities. 25% will go to essential drugs. 50% will be used for facilities and equipment and transport. 5% will go to human resources for health. And then the remaining 5% for national health emergency and uh, epidemic response and preparedness. So, like I said, the annual grant from the federal government of not less than 1% of the consolidated revenue fund goes to this fund. In addition, we also have grants by international donors, funds generated from innovative sources like taxes on cigarettes and alcohol, and then every state and local government is supposed to pay 25% counterpart funding before they can, before they can uh, uh, tap into the funds. So for the states to benefit from the funds, they are required to establish a state primary health care development agency or board in addition to the 25% counterpart funding. The local governments are also expected to pay their own 25% counterpart funding. The difference between the flow of funds in this basic health care provision fund and the normal flow of fund is that the 1% is coming directly from the federation account, in other words, consolidated account. And so it bypasses the usual uh, movement where it goes to the federal government before the federal government starts disbursing. So this is going straight to the Federal Ministry of Health and then to the state's Ministry of Health as well as the local uh, government. It created a different flow of funds as opposed to the usual flow of funds. In implementing the Basic Health Care Provision Fund, it's expected that several stakeholders will be involved across all levels of government and external people. These stakeholders are the federal government, and within the federal government, we have the Federal Ministry of Health, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, the National Health Insurance Scheme, the Federal Ministry of Finance and Budgeting. Then at the state level, we expect the State Ministry of Health, the State Primary Health Care Development Board, where it is formed, and the State Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Local Government to be involved. At the local government area, we have the local government health authorities. And then at the health facility levels, which are usually under the local governments, you will have the health workers and then an accountability mechanism within the uh, local uh, uh, area, which is called the health facility committees, are also expected to be involved in the implementation of the form. And finally, external actors like development partners and donors, civil society organizations, and community members are expected to be involved in the implementation of the form. There are concerns in the past about poor implementation of public policies and key reforms and of corruption issues in the health system. And based on this, we wondered whether the, act, the stakeholders, the key stakeholders, that is the state's Minister of Health, the Federal Minister of Health, and the local government, whether they are ready to actually implement this fund and how ready they are. And so we set out under the uh, RESIST program, the Resilient and Responsive uh, Health System, to investigate the expected roles of these different stakeholders. What accountability mechanism that will support the effective implementation of the fund and the opportunities and challenges for implementing the, the fund. So these were our key research questions. We interviewed stakeholders we reviewed the documents. So this was conducted in Abuja, the federal capital city, as well as one of the states, Anambra states. The research methods included document reviews, various documents, both national and international. Then interviews with key actors, 
and then we also did stakeholder analysis. We used the results of this inquiry to propose an accountability framework for the implementation of the fund. Now, the accountability framework embodies three key strategies. The first is mechanism for strategic planning. The second is strong and transparent monitoring and supervision system. And the third is the systematic uh, reporting. So we're going to take them one by one. For strategic planning, it's expected that the federal government will lead this process. In other words, the Federal Ministry of Health is expected to draw up the guidelines that the states, the local government, and the health facilities will use to be able to implement the fund. So it's expected that strategic planning will occur at that level, and then guidelines and specific rules for each actor defined. Because one of the problems we encounter in similar issues are that roles are not properly defined for various actors. And so you have people clashing, uh, jobs clashing, and uh, responsibilities uh, are not quite clear. So in this framework, it's expected that the Federal Ministry of Health would be very, very clear on specific roles of each actor. Under monitoring and supervision, it's expected that federal government will give an oversight. You know, so so they, are, they give that oversight and you know, governance uh, framework. Then this, the state government, which is another layer of accountability, will provide supportive supervision for the local government. While they are doing this, it's also expected that they will also look into the health facilities. But the key function of the state government will be to provide supportive uh, supervision to the local government. And then in return, the local government will provide supportive supervision to the health uh, facilities. Then the federal government, I mean, at the systematic reporting uh, level, what the accountability framework has suggested is that for each level, we should have a reporting system. For example, at the federal level, we expect or we are recommending online financial reporting. At the state level, we are also recommending online financial reporting. It's recommended also that there should be qualified financial managers who will look into the accounting books. At the local government level, it's also recommended that there should be qualified financial managers, and then there should be financial record keeping at the health facility level. It's also important that we have separation of accounts at both state level and the local government level, so that this will be separated from the usual accounts run by the state governments and the local governments. At the health facility level, the framework also suggests that there should be e-payment for health services. This will reduce handling of cash. So what is regarded in Nigeria now as cashless uh, banking. So that way, it's expected that uh, there will be minimal corruption and there will be minimal uh, interference with the, the funds. So. Like I said, in explaining the framework, the state government provides supportive supervision to the local government through mentoring and training. It also suggested that there should be dispersal of funds to the local government authority. They are expected to employ qualified finance managers and demonstrate transparency by separating the fund from their state's health account, that's their usual account and make financial reports available to the public online. At the local government level, we also expect that they should produce a plan on how the fund will be disbursed to the facilities. This is very, very important 
for any local government that is not able to produce the plan, then no fund is ceded to that local government. They should also employ qualified finance managers to audit the accounts regularly and then demonstrate transparency by also separating the funds from their usual source of funding at the PAC level. At the facility level, each facility is also expected to produce a plan on how the funds will be spent. Again, any facility that is unable to produce this plan does not get anything from the local government. Then the health facility committees, which is an accountability framework at the local level, should also monitor how the revenue is spent. The health facility committees uh, are made up of people from the community and then people from the health facility. So it's a link between the local government and the community, a link between the government and the community people. So this is a very, very strong committee that is expected to uh, monitor the flow of these funds. In addition, the facilities should put in place systems for keeping records about how the funds are managed. And these records should be made available to auditors, made available to committee members. And finally, it's also recommended, like I said before, that the facilities use e-payment or banks to process consumer payments, that is the cashless banking. The community members and other external actors have a key role to play, and this has been adequately captured by the framework. So the framework suggests that the community members through the health facility committees should be involved in decisions regarding how the health facility revenue is spent. Then development partners and civil society organizations should also monitor the release of funds at each level of the health system. The civil society organizations should also act as whistleblowers in case there is a derailment in the implementation of the fund. There are challenges to accountability and implementation as noted by the stakeholders interviewed. And this included delayed transfer of revenue, poor data and financial management, of course, the corruption issues and lack of preparedness and capacity of the local government to actually manage the fund. So, mechanisms should be put in place to improve the capacity of the local government authority to manage the fund. So, how have we used this framework to influence policy? Uh, in the first place, HPROG have had feedback meeting with two state governments. The state government, the government, the state where we did the study, which is Anambra State, and the Enugu State where HPROG resides. We've also had feedback to Federal Ministry of Health and some development partners. And it's expected that they will keep this into their planning strategies. Now, HPROG's researchers are also members of a technical working group for the operationalization of the act as set up by the Federal Ministry of Health. The HPRG researchers are also involved in supporting plans for universal health coverage at the Federal Ministry of Health. At any available opportunity, this framework is usually presented to stakeholders uh, attending the meetings. Now, working with civil society organizations to advocate for implementation of the act and maintain the government's focus on universal health coverage is also a function that health policy research group uh, researchers also undertake on a regular basis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the framework that I have uh, presented you know, briefly. Uh, in the next presentation, Right Honorable Dr. Daniel Obuabo, who is the Chairman House Committee on Health in one of the states we have done feedback on, that is Enugu State, will present progress in, in implement, implementing the Basic Healthcare Fund and the potential role of this, our accountability framework. Thank you very much, um, DSC. Yeah, I will be looking at the 
implementation, uh, progress of implementation, and how useful this accountability framework would be to the government of Nigeria, the Enugu State in particular. So I'm going to use um, the PHC under one roof and um, the state-supported national health insurance scheme to demonstrate the progress of, uh, in implementing the basic health care fund. And the PSC under one roof implementation scorecard report of November 2015 across the nine domains or di dimensions uh, will be our guide. Now, what you're seeing is a national uh, average for the nine domains of the PHC under one roof. Now, like uh, BSC presented, um, it is expected that every state should have a primary health care board, and this primary health care board should uh, bring primary health care under one roof in each state. Now, in the, the dimension that we are set to governance and ownership, legislation, uh, minimum service package, repositioning, uh, systems development, operational guidelines, human resources, funding and sources, uh, funding sources and structure, and office setup of the primary healthcare development agencies. This is the geopolitical zone performance, and uh, you will notice that uh, across the six geopolitical zones, the northwest seem to have um, about 55%, that is, uh, and then the southeast of Nigeria, where a new state, or an Anambra is one of the states that was assessed in the, um, that was the study site for this um, implementation, um, is the least in terms of a geographic, a geopolitical zone uh, performance, 19% on the average. Now, so in the, we'll look at the one state from the northwest and one state from the southeast to see um, the readiness of the state to assess these funds. This is the uh, giga, uh, the states in the northwest zone of Nigeria and uh, their performance across the nine domains on the average. Um, Jigawa states appears to be the best performing not only uh, in the, in the uh, Northwest, but also in Nigeria, uh, with 80% readiness. Uh, but the other states, Sokoto is about 45. So let's see exactly what is in Jigawa state. Now, across the nine domains of um, the PAC under one roof, Jigawa has got uh, um, high scores in governance and ownership and 100% um, in terms of legislation. And that's because Jigawa has um, oppressed a, a Bundima health system, which is very well established as a state primary health care board, and have de developed a, a minimum service package. And PHC has been repositioned in, in, to the extent that all PHCs are now under one roof in um, Jigawa state. That means that even the local government service commission has seconded health work, primary health worker workers to the Gundima uh, Health Board. Systems are properly developed. They have, um, I mean, uh, uh, they have operational guidelines. The challenge that Jigawa has at the moment is that of human resources to support primary care development or primary care services. But funding sources and structure properly delineated and the funding line established. Now, this is contrary to what you see in the southeast uh, zones that are less performing. And um, Enugu State, where uh, we, we operate from, has got a 10% average midway between um, Ebony and the uh, Abiyak State. And so when you, if you look at these um, um, southeast states, compare them to the northwest states, you see the varying uh, the differences in terms of um, readiness of uh, the regions to assess this fund. Now, specifically when we focus in, uh, on Enugu, the governance and ownership and legislation are the only areas that um, uh, Enugu have performed in, uh, in terms of uh, bringing primary health care under one roof. And that's basically because we do not have um, a, a primary health care board in place. The minimum service package has not been developed. The operational guidelines are not there. There's a low retention of health workers. It's a poor motivation, and the, the, the legis there's no legislation in place to even define uh, funding sources and structures. There is no office uh, uh, set up in place. Now, so basically, uh, in, in terms of the structure of uh, the primary health care boards, you, you can see that uh, very many states of, in Nigeria are not yet um, ready. 
Now, you look at the state-supported national health insurance, which should um, have vexed the 50% the of this 1% uh, uh, consolidated uh, revenue fund. Only two states, Lagos and Delta states, have, uh, have a, a functional state-supported national uh, state, uh, health insurance programs at the moment. And this represents about 5% of the 37 states, I mean 36 states and federal capital territory, Abuja. However, uh, there is a template of legal framework that should guide a state to uh, set up a state-supported national health insurance programs. Now, what were the key challenges? The delay in the Gazette of uh, the National Health Act was obviously one, uh, because it was only uh, gazetted uh, in the Dece December of the, uh, 2015, from two months after it was assented to. And as we are speaking, there is no budget in the 2016 uh, physical year for operationalizing this fund. Delay in the development of guidelines and manuals. Yes, there is an existing technical working group at the Federal Ministry of Health, uh, which has about five um, subcommittees. But only the health financing equity and investment uh, subcommittees seem to have uh, met severally um, in the last one year. So the other committees that should develop um, the guidelines that will show clarity of roles and um, processes and procedures for operationalizing the basic health care fund have uh, actually not uh, uh, worked optimally. The state's preparedness to manage fund is low. Um, I mean, uh, weakness across the nine dimensions of the primary health care under one roof, uh, and basically the slow progress in establishing state-led health insurance schemes. So what is the potential role of this accountability framework? In Enugu State, um, we, we are undertaking, uh, we've undertaken to incorporate the establishment of a state primary health care board and uh, the state health insurance um, fund. And uh, we basically will uh, incorporate the the, 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 the provisions of this uh, accountability framework into the State Primary Health Care Development Board and the State Health Insurance Scheme uh, uh, law you know, to provide a legal framework for, uh, that will enable proper accountability. So as, as the Chairman House Committee on Health, I have the responsibility to facilitate and drive this process. So but, uh, all in all, we, we see opportunities uh, across um, uh, the, the financing functions, which we think that this uh, basic health care fund, the provision fund is doing, in terms of revenue generation, um, the planning, the monitoring and uh, supervision, and strategic reporting have uh, obvious places, uh, obvious implications. For instance, uh, at the federal level, we expect that the, there should be an interministerial committee on innovative financing. Yeah. Yes, the federal government has committed to 1%. But there is also need to get this 1% into budget. Uh, as we're speaking, it's not in the 2016 budget, meaning that if the current budget is signed into law without really getting this money into the, it means that we cannot operationalize the basic health care fund during 2016. Now, but at the state level, there has to be uh, some commitment to provide the 25% in counterpart funding in the state and local government budgets. And of course, we see opportunity for the external actors, particularly the, inter, uh, the international development, uh, health development partners, to be part of the Interministerial Committee on Innovative Financing. But in terms of uh, monetary and supervision, both the federal government, the state government, and local government should play a role in uh, tracking budget provisions. There are institutions, for instance, the House of Assembly Committee on Health, should be able to track the budgetary provisions and ensure that these money, these uh, allocations uh, properly uh, captured in the budgetary estimates. The, of course, the civil society organizations like in Enugu, where we have the advocacy partnership uh, for good governance, should be able to track um, the pro budgetary provisions um, it, 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 you know, and ensure that um, um, the 25% is uh, captured in the, in the budget. Now, in terms of reporting, cutting across, transparency, Typified by public dispo the disclosure of revenue information, of uh, all financial information. Now, in terms of the PSC fund management, we also see potential roles of the federal government, state and local government, the health facilities and the external actors in planning, in monitoring and supervision and reporting. 
And if we look focused on the Enugu state government, for instance, we should fast track the establishment of the state primary health care board and uh, get the primary health care under roof captured in, us in the upcoming um, state strategic health development plan. The local, uh, the, of course, the, the, the same law that established the primary health care development board would uh, establish the local government health authorities. But the facilities must have costed plan to really show how these funds will be expended and the collation of these will make up the local government's plan which should feed into the state uh, strategic health development plan or the health MTSX. Now, the monitoring and supervision, as, you, as we, we showed earlier, which the Enugu state is very, very low on the five, nine dimensions of uh, primary health care under roof and needed to be monitored. So we expect that the federal government, of course, the Prime Minister of Health should do some level of oversight and the state will continue to do supportive supervision uh, to local governments uh, and the facilities. But basically, the dispersal of funds to primary health care development boards and to local government health authorities must be performance based. And if we're able to capture this in the legal framework that establishes the primary health care development board, then we've succeeded. But we agree, and uh, we think it is uh, we can operationalize uh, a separate uh, basic health care provision fund at the state level and uh, at the local government level and create and establish an online reporting, not just financial reporting, even the human resource, uh, creating a human resource information system, because uh, uh, about 15% of this, this money PSC fund is going into human resources. Uh, of course, the infrastructural development equipment has to be tracked, so there has to be online inventory reports of uh, how this money is being spent on uh, facilities, equipment, and uh, transports, emergency transport for that matter, and human resources. Now, purchasing uh, the minimum service package uh, using the National Health uh, State Supported Health Insurance Scheme, there are opportunities in planning, monitoring, and supervision, and reporting. And um, let's illustrate this with the state. We should uh, fast, fast track the establishment of the state health insurance scheme, as we are doing, and uh, further to that, Establish the uh, state health insurance and primary health care board interagency committee. And of course, at the level of monitoring and supervision, ensure that funds that, are, that, are the, the, that go to local government health authorities or for the accredited facilities or providers are performance based. Yeah, basically, and in terms of reporting, Qualified managers are already in the district health system, so they are, they are, they, the district health boards are uh, manager finance who are experienced and could be used um, to start off uh, the primary health care development uh, board and uh, the local government uh, uh, health authorities. So uh, these are opportunities in the new for now. Now, this, at the level of facility, the e-payments for services have been operationalized in the, uh, the, we've experimented with that at the state teaching hospital and uh, such retail, uh, I mean such a, a payment platforms can be cascaded to the secondary healthcare and primary healthcare facilities. But basically we expect that um, civil society actors should continue to do public care spectrum tracking and the reports should be online, should be real time. We've seen opportunities for strengthening bureaucratic accountability and um, social accountability. The, the, the relationship that exists among multiple public sector actors that are involved in the, in the implementation of this basic healthcare uh, provision form can optimize the planning, uh, monitoring, and supervision and reporting mechanisms that um, are proposed in the accountability framework. And um, in terms of social accountability, the, the, the potential involvement of community members as a health facility committee members, as civil society organizations or health development partners cut across the revenue generation, PSC fund management and purchasing. So we think that uh, as Enugu State, we already committed to that because the, 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 the bill for the new the revised health uh, law, Enugu Health Law, has a, a path that focuses uh, purely on the um, on health facility committees and their roles. So um, thank you very much uh, and comments are very much welcome.
Thank you, uh, Becky, and all listening. So that's the the policymaker uh, applying the framework in any good state, and uh, has suggested what other states can also do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel and Benjamin, for those informative presentations. They're really great. I, I would like to start if no one else has a question. Um, I find it interesting, uh, Daniel, that you mentioned that there are no allocations for the fund in the 2016 budget. And I just wonder whether you could comment on whether you think that the national government is still committed to achieving universal health coverage in Nigeria. Yeah, I think that the uh, government of Nigeria is committed to universal health coverage. There is a, of course, uh, we have to appreciate there is a transition. In the last uh, administration, there was a presidential summit on universal health coverage that was assent to this law. Well, basically, operationalizing laws can be quite challenging, uh, particularly in, uh, in resource constraint setting as we have here. Uh, the, it took quite some time to, about 14 months, more than one year, to gazette the law. And unfortunately, if uh, laws are not gazetted, not much can actually uh, go, go into it. If you realize the amount of policies that went into the policy process of a uh, legislative process of a passage through the National Assembly, then um, of course you will understand uh, why it has been challenging. Uh, to operationalize um, the, the, the law. But that does not suggest that uh, there is no commitment. I think it, it is a part of the, the gap in transition. Thank you for that. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, I just wondered, wondered if someone could explain the gazetting process and the significance of gazetting itself. I didn't realize that it had to also be gazetted. What does that involve? Gazetting uh, laws um, the, the official publication of the law. Usually the law will pass through three stages, the first reading, second reading, and the third reading. Now by the third reading, the, the, the parliament passes a law and sends, transmits it to the to Mr. President for assent. And as quickly as Mr. President has sent the law, it should actually become effective. Now that's where is the bureaucracy? The bureaucracy is, the inter is, 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 a, is a gazetting thing. So between the office of the Mr. President and uh, publishing this, uh, uh, and the, 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 the government printers that will publish this law in the, as part of the laws of Nigeria, a, a, a whole lot of bureaucratic uh, processes uh, intervene. So it is this, uh, this bureaucracy that, uh, of, uh, that is challenging because the, the office of the president, the clerk, office of the, uh, the clerk of the, to the National Assembly, office of the attorney, uh, the attorney general and minister for justice, and then the government office of the, the Ministry of Information and the, the government press. So these multiple public sector actors get emerged in the process of uh, moving this uh, and moving that uh, and, and you know getting these approvals and not getting these approvals unfortunately uh, that's you know uh, influences uh, the time lag uh, between assent and the um, official gazetting which means placing the document in public domain so this hasn't are you saying that this hasn't yet happened with the NHA no it, no, it has it has it, happened it and has. like Dan said you know, you have these three arm of government, the legislation, the executive, and the judiciary. So the legislative have made their recommendation, passed it onto the executive, and the government and the president gave assent. Now from here it moved to the judiciary for gazetting. No, the, the now, executive, executive. Yeah, for executive for gazetting. So all these actors here play different roles and uh, there are still some power dynamics also coming into play here. But at the end of the day, it has been gazetted. That's the key point. Yeah. 
Um, we have a question um, coming in through the chat box from Ejime, who asks, what can you say about the organisational readiness to implement the National Health Act at lower levels, considering that the primary healthcare under One Roof report seems to show that states are focusing on structural rather than functional components, um, for example, systems development and a minimum service package? Yeah, if you if you follow the, the my presentation, I I showed you the status of the primary healthcare under one roof across um, Nigeria and um, in uh, two different zones, the well performing zone and the, the less performing zone. But on the average, most uh, states in Nigeria have not um, established the primary healthcare board. They are not functional. Um, the, there is just the only five percent of states have a state-supported health insurance scheme. So there is slow progress across the states in uh, implementing or in setting up the structures to uh, have these funds from the national. And it, it might even appear to, or to to me that this could be also um, one of the challenges at the federal level why they, uh, they, they, they do not seem to to be in a hurry to get the the, 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 the money appropriated. Because even if you appropriated it in 2016, how many states are ready to, uh, to, to, to draw down on the, on the fund? So basically, we, in Enugu, if we use Enugu as a typical example, we have only done well, uh, so to say, in two of nine dimensions. The governorship and ownership and legislation. Even at the legislation, that we, we are, I mean, where we claim we've done well, is about 30%, which means we needed to revise our laws. Because, it, I mean, we have a, an extant health law that creates a district health system. But this district health system brings um, secondary health care and primary health care under one governance and management framework. So we need to unpack them. And if we do, and then we bring all primary health care um, into the primary healthcare development board, then we will we, we'll be on track, and this is what we are set to do. Okay, so so like uh, Nan had said, the basically the states are not ready to operationalize this fund. One is that the federal government itself has not provided a guideline on how to go about this. The only guideline which is provided in the act is the establishment of the primary health care development uh, agency or board by the states. And only about 5% of the states have done this. So the readiness of about uh, uh, more than 90% is still questionable. So the answer to your question is that states are not yet ready to draw down on this fund, even if it's uh, appropriated or budgeted. Is it possible to explain what the, in terms of percentages, I mean, from when the act was passed, the Naira has fallen really drastically. Is it possible to, do you have a figure as to what the gap is now within the fund because of the Naira falling? Whatever comes in, 1% of it is what goes to the fund. The 1% is based on the national income. Yeah. If, even if the income in absolute value drops, what, means, what it means is the 1% in absolute value will also drop. Yeah, we are not aware of any costing that uh, has been done, but we do know that uh, for example, the, the group now is the Health Policy Research Group is involved in some costing to determine what it will take to uh, uh, administer health in a primary health care center. But obviously, the, the, at, a, at a time the, the bill was passed into law, the, the National Assembly, would, uh, in, in making the choice of 1%, I think it was a political choice. It was not necessarily informed by any costing, uh, costing activity. Yeah. But then, the, sub, the health financing, investment, and the equity 
subcommittee of the technical working group uh, based at the Federal Ministry of Health is, is doing some costing at the moment to be able to provide um, a, a guide to the cost implications of implementing uh, the basic healthcare fund. Okay, thank you. I think um, we're just coming up to the end of uh, the time for the session now. So um, I think we'll end it there uh, by saying a big thank you to uh, Daniel and Benjamin again for your presentations. And, and thank you very much for joining the webinar.